Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. This is Nitin here and today I have come up with a very interesting problem, very challenging also and it's a conceptually very rich problem. It was uh, shared by one of my student and uh, as you can see this is the diagram of uh, this particular problem. So a lot of things are there in this and uh, name of the problem is challenge of electrostatic pressure and uh, capacitor. So all right, let's uh, discuss this problem in today's uh, video. So here is the statement of uh, this problem. It seems uh, it appeared in uh, a physics cup or something. I don't know exactly, but it was I found it very challenging. So uh, let's read this uh, statement. Here it is given. There is a solid metal sphere of radius R, which is cut into two parts along a plane in such a way that the outer surface of smaller part of the sphere is pi r square so this area is given this area area of this cup when you cut this sphere about this point you'll get a cup area of that cup is given as pi r square so remaining area is going to be 3 pi r square it is mentioned the cut surfaces are coated with a negligibly thin insulated layer so this gap has been uh, uh, you know here we are uh, pasting a very thin layer of insulation and they are saying and the two parts are put together so that the original shape of the sphere is restored so when we are combining them with the insulation in the middle uh, again uh, in the problem it is given that the original shape of the sphere is maintained so very thin coating is present initially the sphere is electrically neutral then the smaller part of the sphere is given a positive charge q so by some mechanism we are giving a positive charge of q to this smaller part the larger part of the sphere remains neutral at that part uh, at that moment because here you can see there is a thin insulation so there is no direct contact with the, this external source which is charging this upper part so now questions are the charge distribution along the sphere and number b is the electrostatic interaction force between the two pieces of the sphere this is very challenging let me tell you and c part is the electrostatic energy of the sphere so this is the entire uh, question. I hope uh, you are getting a feel of this problem. So let's move ahead and uh, discuss the solution part of uh, this question. So a lot of assumptions we have to make in order to solve this question. Luckily, these assumptions have led me to the correct answer for this. So as you can see here, I'm denoting this part. I'm uh, with the pink color. I'm keeping this uh, thin insulation. And when I'm giving this charge of uh, Q, so this surface of the metal and this surface of the metal charge q will get divided into these two parts all right charge q will be divided into these two parts so i am saying here because this charge uh, part this is going to create a field and some charges will be induced in the larger part of the sphere as well so i am assuming some charge q1 is coming on this flat surface of this smaller part then the remaining uh, is going to be q minus q1 and i can treat this uh, small part as a parallel plate capacitor because size of the conductor shape doesn't matter it's these two facing surfaces and they are placed very close to each other so due to induction i can say minus q1 charge is going to come and in the larger part on the outer sphere charge is going to be plus q since it is conductor charge cannot stay inside this conductor so these assumptions I'll be discussing here. Uh, since the gap is very small and the contact surfaces are flat, this can be treated as a parallel plate capacitor that I have just explained. Also, the potential difference between the two parts will be negligible due to this small gap despite having a finite electric field. So you can say here the field in this region between the two parts in this pink region, it is going to be Q1 by A epsilon naught. All right, so that field is finite, but since gap is very, very small, so this potential difference between these two layers will be very negligible. We can ignore, we can ignore it. We can completely ignore this uh, potential difference, even though field is finite. But since gapping is so thin that we can say this potential difference is 
insignificant it is not significant all right so if if i ignore this potential difference here we can say that uh, nearly the, this potential difference is uh, same only if it is uh, same i can say feel inside in this part is zero in this part is zero and ignoring this potential this will lead me to the as if the inside part is resembling the solid conducting sphere and if it is resembling the solid conducting sphere the field must be identical to a solid conducting sphere it must be identical to solid conducting here a solid conducting sphere so here you can see on ignoring the gap due to small potential difference we can say the two parts are nearly at the same potential this will resemble the case of conducting solid uh, sphere with field inside zero everywhere it means what is the meaning of it now we can uh, say this since this is resembling the solid conducting sphere the sigma of this part and the sigma of this part charge density of this part must be same so charge density here is going to be q minus q1 by pi capital r square and charge density here is going to be q1 by 3 pi r square so when i equate this i am going to get the value of these uh, charges which are going to come on each surface of these two conductors now so sigma is going to be uniform this is the answer for first part it is going to be uniform almost uh, whatever problem may occur it will be occurring about uh, on these edges we can ignore that part and effects we can ignore now the next part is which i found very very challenging here very interesting also so here you can see this is the line of insulation which was separating these two uh, spheres so when i calculate the forces here there are uh, two forces one is due to this part force applied by these two halves which will resemble the electrostatic pressure concept this problem we have done in electrostatic pressure where uh, force between one part due to another part we calculate so this is one force i am calling this as f1 and there is another force which will be present here between these two plus q1 and minus q1 and since we called it as a uh, capacitor so this force fc I'm calling it as F capacitor. Now that's why the symbol is FC. All right. All right. So the resultant force will be either FC minus F1 or F1 minus FC. Magnitude wise, we are going to write this answer. So I'll repeat this part one once again. Uh, this Q1 is going to apply some force here. That is F1. And these two will be attracting each other. So that is one force. I'm calling it as FC or force of capacitor, whatever thin capacitor which is formed here. And difference of these two will be the net force acting on each part of this. Now, another part here, this cap, the cup kind of thing which we are obtaining here, its area is given to us as pi r square. And this kind of derivation we have done in case of uh, a Gauss law where we calculate this area of this cap. And that comes as uh, 2 pi capital R square 1 minus cos theta. It's a standard result. I'll uh, request students to remember this. Otherwise, calculating this will further add uh, or increase the length of the solution and uh, time also. So remembering such uh, results is going to be very, very handy, very, very useful in order to solve problems. So now this A is pi R square. If I substitute, I am going to get this angle theta as pi by 3. So when I get this angle as pi by 360 degree, then I know this distance is going to be r by 2 and this distance is going to be r sin 60, which is root 3 r by 2. Now I know this. So once I know this distance, the calculation of F1 and Fc will become very easy for me. Now I can write, this is the problem of uh, electrostatic pressure where force between these two parts we calculate and it is simply sigma square by 2 epsilon naught times pi times this projection area which is pi capital R square minus x square. So I can write this value of F1 as sigma square by 2 epsilon naught pi R square minus x square. That is what I have written here and that radius this radius is root of r square minus x square when i substitute values this is the term i'm going to get i'm writing this force is due to pressure okay now force due to this uh, capacitor we can simply write it as q square by 
2 a epsilon naught this also is a standard result we must remember so when i substitute this charge on the capacitor is q1 so this is going to be the due to capacitor now force by one part on another part will be the magnitude of this i am writing f1 minus fc if answer comes positive means f1 is more and if answer comes negative then fc will be more all right so when i substitute the values and do some calculations as you can see i am not explaining this calculation part you know already all the values we have calculated and this answer comes with the negative sign it simply means f1 is smaller fc is larger that is what i have written here fc is greater than f1 so when i simplify this the net force between the two parts i am going to get 45 q square by 128 pi epsilon naught r square this is going to be the answer of uh, the second part i am sure you are enjoying this uh, question very much and uh, now the third part is energy is stored since this field is identical to a solid conducting sphere force is present on the surface solid conducting sphere field is uh, identical to conducting shell so the energy stored in this part this is going to be energy stored in this part this is going to be nothing but the self energy of the sphere which is going to be q square by 8 pi epsilon naught r this is going to be the answer for third part so i hope you have enjoyed this if you have enjoyed this then please like the video share it with your friends and uh, teachers and if you haven't subscribed my channel please subscribe it leave a comment your comments are uh, very very valuable because it motivates me to bring more such amazing problems so keep commenting and thank you thank you very much